Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to end effectors and how you can use them for animating your characters in Cartoon Animator 4. Okay, so end effectors are pretty cool. We're going to talk about them a little bit later on in more detail as we go along here. Um, and we're going to be using the 2D Motion Key Editor. Okay, a very important tool. So let's go ahead first and bring in our character, our actor. Okay, so we're going to go over here to the Actor tab in the Content Manager. Select uh, Character. We're going to twirl that down and go into G3 and G3 Human, and we have Athletic Tim here, okay, with the F, that uh, indicates front facing. Okay, there's an S which stands for side facing at 45 degrees, and S2 which stands for uh, also side facing at 90 degrees from the camera. Okay, so we're going to load in the motion key, uh, 2D motion key editor, and to do that there's a few ways we can activate that. We can also, we can go, first of all go over here to uh, select the 2D motion key editor from the uh, side toolbar, okay, and that'll pop up right here. We'll close it down for now. You can also go up here to the file menu under animation and select 2D motion key editor from here. Okay. You can also right click on your character and go to motion key editor right here and that'll load up your 2D motion key editor. And finally, you can also use the K hotkey. Okay. So if you press K, your 2D motion key editor will pop up as well. Okay. So those are the four ways you can access your motion key editor here. So what we're going to do in this tutorial by the end is we're going to create a very simple uh, four, uh, four uh, position animation here. Okay, we're going to have our character do some kind of cool looking exercise. Uh, some kind of like 1980s aerobic exercise. Okay, but first of all, let's take a look at our 2D motion key editor. Now we're going to go into more detail on explaining the UI in this uh, 2D motion key editor in, in another tutorial. Okay, but for now, we'll just take a look at the briefly what we have uh, enabled here. So currently we're in image view. There's also hierarchy view. We'll talk about that in another tutorial, like I mentioned. I'm going to just disable this keep end effector angle for now. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, but what we're going to do first is let's take a look at end effectors. So you can see our character is made up of all these different bones. If we select them on the image here, the corresponding bone on your character's body will be selected in the viewport. Okay, so you can go thigh bone hand bone, uh, arm bones, all these bones, okay? And right arm, uh, lower arm, or forearm rather, okay? And you can see that all of them are yellow, except for the one that we have selected, which is blue, and the red ones here, which are locked. These are the end effectors, okay? So the end effectors allow us to do, you know, realistic uh, motions, realistic uh, human movement using Smart IK, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my character's hip, now the hip bone is the one that can move your entire character. If you don't have hand effectors enabled, your hip bone will just move your entire character. Let's take a look at what that looks like actually. So we're going to actually disable these hand effectors by clicking on the locks there. And if I move my character's hips just like this, you can see it'll move the entire character. Okay, you can move them around like this. If I control Z and undo that. If I move my mouse cursor slightly outside the selection box, it'll change to a rotate uh, icon, a rotate cursor. Okay. And we can rotate our character as well. Whee. Okay, so you can move and rotate your character by the entire character by using the hip bone. However, by default, these uh, right leg and left leg locks will be on here, okay? And now if we try to move our character using the hip, what's going to happen? You can see our, our feet position will remain stationary and we'll have some natural, you know, uh, bending of the legs. Um, if we move our hip bone around like this, we can have them do kind of a cool tantalizing dance here, okay? Um, and if you try to rotate your hips, same thing, okay? Now keep in mind that if you uh, move your character uh, far away, or too far away, without stretch bone enabled, we'll talk about that in another tutorial, then the feet will have no choice but to follow along with the body, okay? Just like this. Whee! Okay. So let's go ahead and press reset to uh, reset our character back to the default A pose and position there. So those are the end effectors, and that's how they work. Now we also have, uh, if we want to unlock a single one of them, for example, we can unlock the right leg by itself. And if we move down, you can see what I'm talking about here. This is uh, when only one of the end effectors is enabled. We'll get uh, results like this. Okay, let's just reset one more time. Now on top of the uh, feet, we also have hand end effectors. Okay, so you can see our hand underscore lock when I mouse over this uh, little unlocked uh, box here or uh, uh, lock. Okay. If we select it, that'll uh, enable the end effector on the right hand. And now if we move our hip, you can see we'll have our character's knees bend and the arm will bend as well, okay? Like he's kind of like jumping around doing a, spinning a record as a DJ or something like that, okay? He's at a nightclub and 
So very easy and simple uh, animation to do. Okay, uh, that's what happens when you enable the uh, hand locks. And you can do the other one as well, just like this. Let me move around. You can see the results like this. Okay, so those are the end effectors, all the end effectors on your character's body. Now let's just press reset. We can take the uh, the uh, right arm, upper arm, for example, and if we move that separately, you can see we can make kind of a, uh, a shrug like this, okay? But the end effector will still be in effect, <laughs> okay, at the end on our character's hand, all right? So just keep in mind that it'll remain in that static position unless you move it too far away from the body, in which case it'll have no chance, or no choice, rather, but to move along with the body, okay? Fairly simple stuff. So that's really all that end effectors are in a nutshell, is just uh, kind of uh, constraints that keep the legs, or rather the feet and the hands, in a certain static position um, relative to the body. However, if you, of course, move the uh, body far away from it, it'll have no choice but to follow, okay? And the smart IK is the natural kind of uh, joint movement that results when you have those end effectors enabled and try to move uh, different bones in certain positions. Okay, so let's do let's take a look at doing our first animation. Okay, um, so the first animation to when you do animations, I recommend highly recommend opening the transform or rather the uh, timeline. Okay, and the timeline can be found down here. You can just click on this button right here. You can also use the F3 hotkey. Okay, for timeline. So when you open the timeline, when you're doing uh, motion key editing, I recommend opening the motion track here. Okay, or the motion section because it contains all the motion tracks. Now, there's a whole ton of them here. Um, you can see we have hip, arm, and all that stuff. The, really, all you need to know is that the T stands for transform, and that's the position of your bone on the screen at any time. If you change that position, it's going to create a keyframe, and we're going to do that in just a moment here. But generally, we're, generally we're only going to worry about the overall absolute transform track here. Okay, So this is for all the keys on the body. Okay, So what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and take our character, uh, select his hip here, and we're going to bring him down just like this, okay? Oh, we need to make sure we don't have those uh, uh, hand effectors or hand end effectors enabled there. And bring him down just like this, okay? We're going to put him into a kind of a squat position because he's going to be doing an exercise for us. All right, and we're going to go ahead and take the uh, feet. Now, this is important. We're going to take a look at one constraint in this tutorial. Uh, we'll have another tutorial on, on constraints. But if I click and drag my foot, notice that the ankle will just kind of you know, it won't slide along the ground. It'll just kind of go relative into position that it was already in. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to avoid that. Let's control Z that there. What I'm going to do is go ahead and keep end effector angle. Okay. What that's going to do is now if I select my uh, foot and I move it, it'll slide along at the same angle. Okay. Just like this. It won't kind of maintain its original position. It'll just maintain the original of the angle that we want it to be at. Okay. So just like this, we'll slide it over here and give our character a nice 90 degree squat. And we'll do the same thing over here on our character's uh, left foot. We'll just go ahead and click it and uh, we can click the ankle there and uh, move it along. Okay, and it'll maintain that angle. And let's take our uh, arms and just kind of bring them up like this. So he's kind of just uh, doing a 1980s fitness pose like this. And up, and up. Okay, we'll just keep his uh, this arm up as well. And throw them onto his head like that. They're hidden. They're now hidden in his afro. Okay, so this is our first frame. Okay, so we're doing this all at frame one. And if we scroll up, you can actually get rid of all these uh, tracks here by uh, just clicking the X on them. We don't really need them all. Okay, the only ones we need to worry about, like I mentioned, are the uh, transform track. Okay, at the uh, very top, because we're not going to be messing around with individual um, bones at different times. Okay, so we have this frame. Let's go to frame ten. And at frame ten, what we're going to do is we're going to have our character. We're going to take his hips, and we're going to bring his hips up. All right, and we're going to just, we don't really have to unlock this leg if we don't want to. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to take our character up like this into a position right here, okay? And we're going to also disable now the uh, keep end effector angle, and I'm going to just rotate that, uh, that foot a little bit more like this, and we'll bring it, the shank and rotate it inwards like this, okay? So this is our first pose, all right, just like this. So our character will kind of go up like this. Whoop. All right, you click and drag in the timeline, you can see it go up like this. All right, now what we want to do here is I'm going to actually go a few frames later because he's going to stay in this position for a few frames, maybe to frame 15 here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select set key. Now what set key will do is that will add a 
absolute keyframe for all the different bones on your character's body. So you can see hip, uh, shank, and the T, of course, stands for transform. Okay, so that's the position of your bone uh, on the t on the uh, in the viewport at any time on your character. Okay, so an app, when you select set key, it has an absolute keyframe for all the different transform tracks for each, each individual bone here. Okay, so we're going to keep it like that. And then we're going to go back down into the squat position. So we can do that easily by actually just clicking on the first frame here, uh, the first keyframe, right clicking it and selecting copy. You can also control C and control V. And then we'll just go to frame 25 and right click and paste it. Okay. So then what we have is this. Oop. Oop. Okay. And we're going to actually bring our character up on the other side again. Okay. So this time we're going to go up here to, uh, frame 35 here. And we're going to take our character up on the other side. So I'm going to select the hip and bring them up like this. All right. Like that. And uh, let's just, uh, just like that. Okay. There we go. Um, let's keep his knees a little bit bent here. Okay. And again, I'll just take that uh, shank there and I can move it up like this. And let's take that uh, foot and just kind of make it to a bit more of a natural angle there. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now we have this. And uh, like I mentioned, we're going to go to uh, the five frames later. We'll set another key. And then we'll just copy and paste that uh, squat position again. Okay, so right-click copy and uh, down to uh, frame 50 and right-click and paste. Okay, so now we have, if we click and drag in the uh, timeline here, we have this. Okay, fairly simple animation. All right, and this is all done thanks to the end effectors on the legs. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just loop this really quickly. And the best way to do that is to click and drag this little red triangle over here, which is your project length. I'm going to click and drag it to about here. We can start to see it appear in the timeline at the bottom there. And we can get a more accurate position, just like this. Let's just bring it to uh, frame 55 or something. Okay. And then we'll have, if we select this button right here, which is loop, we can change our loop to on. Now, if I play back, we're going to have our character come up. Oop, like that. Okay. Looks fine and dandy. Now, what we want to do here is it looks a little bit stale, looks a little bit too linear. It doesn't really look like he's having a dynamic exercise here. And what we're going to do to uh, to make to give this uh, action some more energy is we're going to use transition curves. Okay, so we're essentially done with the uh, 2D motion key editor now. We can actually just close it down. And what I'm going to do is from this frame, from his squat to the upper frame right here, where he's up, like kind of on one foot here. What I'm going to do is between these two frames, I want to create a transition curve. Okay, I'm going to right click on the second uh, keyframe here and select transition curve. And that'll bring up our transition curve editor here. We have a number of different presets. Now you can choose ones like uh, end and a bounce and your character will kind of bounce up like that. Okay, just imagine it from, from this frame to this frame, this is happening, Boom, like that. Or this one is a stutter start. Okay, this one basically, you can see all the different uh, various, uh, you know, energetic movements you can create. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create this damping one. So the damping one actually goes a bit further than the 100% transform key. Like it goes a bit further than your end key and then it kind of slowly dampens back. Okay. So like this, so you can see it'll kind of bounce up like that and go back into position, the original position. Okay. And that's what we want to do. Okay. So from that frame to that frame, we'll have this kind of uh, um, transition key. And if we click and dr uh, drag in our timeline, you can see that this will disable Anywhere we don't have a keyframe, it'll be disabled. However, if we go to this keyframe here, where he's on his way down, what we want to do here is click on this keyframe, and we want to change this one to a decelerate. Okay, so he slowly kind of goes down like that. We can have an accelerate, which, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense, or we can have it smooth. Okay, um, there's a pause and move. Uh, gain momentum before the move. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use a decelerate one. Okay, um, and then we'll go to this one here. So from this frame to this frame, Again, we want to do the same thing, have a damping. Okay. And then from this frame to this frame, we're going to use the decelerate again. Okay. So what that did is that created a bit more of a dynamic motion. If we play it back now with a loop, you can see like, whoop, uh, whoop. okay. And it just looks like a bit more energetic than it did before. So very, very simple thing that we can use. And you can also uh, adjust the strength of these, uh, of these transition curves as well. We're going to get into that more in uh, future tutorials. This is our motion right here. Okay. So we have a nice loopable motion. So the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a item in our character's personal action menu. Okay, so to do that, uh, so we can use this motion at any time in the future as well. 
Okay, there's, there's a couple ways you can save your motion. You can actually save it to your uh, custom animation uh, folder as well. I'll talk about how to do that later, uh, in separate tutorials rather. But for this one, we're just going to go ahead and open up our collect clip track here. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to basically add a motion to our character's action menu. So I'm going to click and drag for the entire 55 frames here. Left click and drag, and you can see it becomes gray. I'm going to right click then and select add to action menu. Okay, we're going to call this exercise. Okay, and press enter. So what we have now is we have this motion. And if we go to a future frame, let's extend our project length a little bit more. And let's go to like frame 70 or something. And at frame 70, what I'm going to do is right click on my character, go to the action menu, and now you can see we have exercise right here. Okay, I'm going to uh, play that or just apply that. And you can see it creates a clip and the motion track. And now this clip here contains all this data, all this keyframe uh, animation that we did before. So if we you know play it back, it's the exact same thing. Okay, and we can loop. We can loop the clip as, as much as we want and don't worry about that uh, transition there. But this is basically what we have. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. That's the introduction I wanted to give you for uh, how to use uh, end effectors for some uh, dynamic 2D animation. And we have other tutorials that go into a lot more depth on the different constraints for the end effectors and the UI and all that fun stuff. All right, so thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot. Make sure you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.